Welcome to Besiege Bots, the real home of robotic combat in Besiege. In this episode, we begin the featherweight bracket round of 16 and find four members of our quarterfinals. Kicking it off in this one, we have a battle between a veteran team and a rookie team, and then later in the main event, we have two very strong teams facing off, with Team Archaeon taking on 999 Robotics. Krakatoa 2 lived up to its explosive moniker in its rumble, scattering pieces of its opponents across the arena en route to a lopsided decision win. In this matchup, the oldest team in Besiege Bots faces the second newest team in a battle of veteran versus rookie. Poison Water was a bit lucky to eke out a controversial decision win in its rumble over Montanti. In this matchup, they face a veteran team in the Diddlers who have a very dangerous spinner. Team Dangerous Purposes will look to throw Krakatoa around and look for a KO of their own. We kick off the featherweight bracket round of 16 here in episode 11 with the oldest team in Besiege Bots, the Diddlers, who actually founded Besiege Bots, and the second newest team, Team Dangerous Purposes, who are one of the two rookie teams in this tournament, along with the Hydra Initiative. Some good hits early. That was a good throw from Poison Water as well. Mm, they... I'm not sure if they're aiming at the right side of the spinner there. That time they... No, they didn't, I don't think. Yeah, they're not aiming at the right side... They're not aiming at that leading edge of Krakatoa's spinner. And they get tossed aside there. Krakatoa heads over toward the wall. Krakatoa does bounce around a lot when it hits things, because it's not particularly heavy. Not the best driving so far from Poison Water. They're not aiming it, but they still haven't figured out which side that spin is hitting on, it seems like. And they lose a wheel for it. We'll see if they can hit the right edge of that spinner. That seemed like they might have there. This time they're aiming at the correct edge. They still end up eating the hit first though. It's good driving from the Diddlers so far. Oh, and a big hit there! Destroys Poison Water's weapon. Oh, and Krakatoa's weapon bar explodes in the meantime off camera. And they're being counted out if they don't happen to bounce back over, and that's it. Wow, that is so lucky for Poison Water. They lost their weapon motor on that hit. But Krakatoa's weapon bar exploded. Poison Water moves on, Krakatoa is eliminated. LI3 got the fastest win in the tournament so far, managing to toss Beatbox into the pit in under 30 seconds in the redemption round. In this match, they face a tough stylistic matchup into Mali 3 but look to continue their journey towards the crown. Tamali 3 put on a hard-hitting performance in the redemption round, dismantling low amounts of patriotism. In this matchup, they look to show the same controlled destruction they used in that fight against a very different opponent in LI3. with fight number two between the vertical spinner LI3 and the hammer of Tamali 3. The difference being that Tamali 3 is the third version of Tamali while LI3 is just a name, it's not the third version. But uh, two solid bots from two pretty good teams. We mentioned last time we saw Team Pilot like that they just haven't really found the level of tournament success that they would be hoping for so far in their tournaments and unfortunately that continued for them with Pyre being eliminated and pitted by Elwork. But Team Questionable Engineering already has one bot through to the quarterfinals and they're looking to make it two while completely eliminating Team Pilot Light here. Some Huge hits early from Tamali as well, some very good hits, like completely bent that wedge up on LI3, which is going to make it really hard for it to hit anything with the weapon. 
really good hits from Tamali. I'm surprised LA3's motor hasn't been broken due to these hits, actually. Oh, a wheel comes out there. I'm not sure what that was from. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see. It looks like it's the bright red that Tamali uses. Is it maybe from Tamali's motor? I'm not too sure. But anyway, Li3 getting a decent push in there while it had Tamale off balance, but ooh. Li3 not controlling very well because of how bent up that wedge is from these hits from Tamale. Tamale showing really good restraint in this fight. They did that in the redemption round as well, but they're doing it here. Li3 actually looked very impressive in the redemption round. Got a hit in like 20 seconds, but. Obviously not quite going her way there. Oh, and that hit actually bent the wedge back down. You take what you can get in these, and that's definitely good for them. They're very happy about that. As they try to close in on Tamali here, they're having a bit of trouble. Tamali gets a hit in. Li3 just can't seem to get in under Tamali to land a hit. Oh, they're trying to line up a pit, maybe? They're just... I feel like they need to be a bit more aggressive when they have these positions. They're trying to line up the perfect shot where they just need to land whatever shots they can. Oh, and the wedge gets completely detached on the right side. That means another good hit could completely rip the wedge out from LI3, which would be pretty bad for it. It'd definitely affect the weight distribution in the bot. Could lead to it tipping over, but we'll see. Ooh, yeah, that is... Ooh, that's not good. That's very bad. It seems like their weapon maybe isn't operating at full power either. I'm not sure. That could just be... No, actually, it seems fine. I don't know. Yeah, I think they're just stopping and starting the weapon. Oh, and the chunk comes out of Tamale when it landed there. That is the danger of hammer designs. You throw yourself so high up that you end up taking chunks off of yourself sometimes. Tamale is very much about hammer power over anything, really. It's all about that hammer power. It has a very small chassis. Decently durable despite that, but Li3 just really not finding anything. I think their weapon... No, it's not broken. They just keep turning it off, and I'm not entirely sure why. It could be to do with the count a counter reaction wheel being broken so it's lifting itself up a bit when it spins that's time we'll see how the judges saw it and it's a 25 to 20 decision for tamale winning on aggression and damage and style but losing out on control yeah that seems about right uh tamale moves on to the quarters and li3 is eliminated Sensory Overload showed some excellent coordination in the redemption round, managing to keep Larry Jr. off balance the entire fight and ultimately win via pit KO. In this fight, team mistakes are made will look to do more of the same against a dangerous spinner in War Games. War Games put up a strong showing in the preliminaries, taking down last year's runner-up Cool Boy and winning a decision. In this fight, they have a good stylistic matchup as their spinner design should prevent Sensory Overload from flanking them. Fight number three, we got War Games against Sensory Overload. Sensory Overload fought a somewhat similar bot in that it's like a wide spinner that you can't really get around in their prelims against Krakatoa, and they had a lot of trouble in that fight. And I'd say War Games is probably a bit more reliable than Krakatoa, but maybe a little less damaging. So we'll see how that plays out in this one, but Sensory Overload did Kreis, one of them flip. I keep talking about how good their teamwork is, and they finally show some bad teamwork there, ending up flipping one of them. It's due to the way the flippers work. They have a sensor on the front there, so if anything ends up directly on top of the flipper, it'll flip. Which is a problem when War Games is throwing them into each other. War Games... Knocked off those blades that are on the top that I think help them self-right. 
but... Oh, one of the sensory overloads got damaged pretty heavily there. One side gets ripped backwards. The connection on that side's broken. That means those wheels will be operating backwards too, which means it's like working against itself. That's very not good for that one. The other one seems to be mostly intact so far. Oh, and there goes the other side connection, I think. Oh, and that one almost gets ooted, the one that's still working. Team mistakes were made having a lot of trouble in this one. They're just really not able to get under war games and do much of anything. The one that's still intact tried to help the other one. It's struggling to try and get up, but it can't really move because it's trying to drag the whole flipper arm along with it. And it doesn't have the force in the flipper arm to get back up. And it seems like it's been counted out, yeah, the damaged one is counted out, so now it's a one-on-one -on -one and its side gets split now. This is really bad, sensory overload. Are basically relying on a grabber explosion or something to win this fight right now. Oh, and that one ends up flipping itself over, it was having trouble driving, it was trying to flip that arm back in place, but now it can't get back up! This is bad! They're being counted out, and that's it! Wargames wins by KOing both Sensory Overloads. Wargames moves on to the quarterfinals. Sensory Overload is eliminated. Montanti had a dominant performance in the Redemption Round, tossing around Vomit Comet all over the arena before winning by Pip KO. In this matchup, they have a tough out against Zap, who have shown the ability to handle vertical spinners before. Zap showed why Team Archeon are the winningest team in Besiege Bot's history by dominating its rumble with a fairly quick double pit KO. In this fight, they face a vertical spinner that should be able to bite their low chassis and will have to be more careful than in the rumble. Now between two very good teams in 999 Robotics and Team Archaeon. I mentioned that both these teams have made finals before in other tournaments, and Archaeon's won a few. 999 Robotics best finishes as runner-up. Decent early there from Montanti. Good flip from Zap. Oh, and they fire the flipper up, and it looked like it broke Montanti's murder there. It did! They sniped their motor, and Montanti has stopped moving. I think they can drive inverted, but it seems like the driver has just said that's enough. So Zap wins by KO and moves on to the quarterfinals, and Montanti is eliminated from Spring Bash Cup. That's it for this episode. Our four bots heading into the quarterfinals are Poison Water. Tamale 3, War Games, and Zap. Unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to Krakatoa 2, Li3, Sensory Overload, and Montanti. In the next episode, we complete the Featherweight Bracket Round of 16. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you did, please leave a like, comment, and consider subscribing. If you're interested in joining our community, follow the Discord link in the description. From everyone in the Besiege Bots Discord, have a fantastic day, and we'll see you soon.